So the, that research paper was mainly to, to to examine how Namibia can leverage between the two industries mm -hmm. because we, we, we saw the late president's ambition when mm -hmm. he said that he wants to turn Namibia into a renewable energy yes. hub of yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, we got well now. We got, we are going to green hydrogen. I never knew those things. Green hydrogen, what is it? I learned about it only now. And future is there. I am popular, I am invited, and so on. Not before. It's because of that thing. The, the, the questions of which one do you uh, capitalize on, which one do we focus on, because in as much as we want to say it, mm -hmm. the oil and gas is not really painted with a good picture because it's, it's, it's something that is mm -hmm. going to benefit the country more than mm -hmm. the green hydrogen. Thank you so much for coming on our podcast. We really do appreciate you this afternoon. So yeah, how are you doing and how is everything? Okay. I think to start off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. And also a good opportunity to be on this podcast. Okay. Uh, I've been doing well. Okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm yeah. like you. It's like you are all over and really doing, working on a lot of things and all that. So like how is everything? And maybe if you can just as well introduce yourself for people that don't know who Shepard Nyambe is as well. Yeah, so I'm um, Shepard Nyambe, mm -hmm. the Namibia's youngest researcher and of course award-winning. So what I do is do conduct research mm -hmm. in the area of energy specifically, but also in the areas around policy to just see how we can influence policy to drive sustainable development mm -hmm. through research-based initiatives and projects. Mm. So where did this ambition of this uh, aspiration of you diving into research really started from? If maybe you can go back to the beginning or is it something that you majored in? Yeah, so actually it's, it has all uh, out of curiosity. So mm. the, 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 the hunger of wanting to know things and then come to a realization that actually the best way to know is to mm. find out. So find out through research and that, that's that, that's how it all started but it goes mm -hmm. way back to 2014 actually oh. when i was in grade was it nine somewhere there yeah oh. so I, I i out of curiosity i started this study that i was like observing electricity consumption at household level and then mm. it, it ended up into an invention that i invented okay i, call, I called it the shepherd and i said i got patented in mm. 2020 yeah, but the, the whole uh, thing was completed in 2017. So it's an NH saving criterion. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I wanted to professionalize the, the mm -hmm. research and started doing like, research mm -hmm. deeper out of school. Oh, I see. Where was that? Was that in Windhoek or was that back home? Like, uh, it's back home. Back home. Yeah, in Katima. Boys' home. Katima. Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> That's yeah. quite interesting, and it is like it's something that you like you do now to actually contribute to contribute to sustainable goal. Yeah. So I just wanted like uh, as to like your to start with your research paper, the one of navigating the Namibia's energy crossroads. Yeah. So exploring the balance between renewable energy ambitions and force of yes. opportunities as well. Can you just maybe help us share your insight insight on that? on how Namibia can leverage like both sectors as well. Because there's now a whole thing, is now the renewable energy and then there's now fossil fuel. So if you can just maybe see how, yeah, just, uh, we just take us through your research actually. Yeah, so, so the, that research paper was mainly to, to, to examine how Namibia can leverage between the two industries. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we saw the late president's ambition when mm -hmm. he said that he wants to turn Namibia into a renewable energy yes. hub of yeah. Africa. Mm. And then few months after that, there's the oil and gas talks. Mm. Now, the, the, the questions of which one do you uh, capitalize on, which one do we focus on, because in as much as we want to say it, mm. the oil and gas is not really painted with a good picture because it's, it's something that is associated with emissions. Mm. So, so the question of saying now, how do we come? So that, that became the main research question mm. in that paper. Then did, did some literature uh, uh, review mm -hmm. and then 
works to see like from the other cases like for instance uh countries that are developed how do they manage to to maintain sustainable uh industries mm -hmm. at the same time leveraging on the oil and gas so that 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 paper just pinpoints the how we can do it because oh. at the end of the day we really don't have to to throw away any of the two yeah. industries it's just a matter of finding that that's the strength of each industry and capitalize on both strength mm -hmm. and then uh the paper also after the re the the, the research is, was conducted some mm -hmm. interviews uh, were done what, what what we what the research then says is that we look at what opportunities does one present mm -hmm. so that we, we use those opportunities to cover for the other one so for instance the, the oil and gas um, industry needs energy itself mm -hmm. the, 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 though it's going to be offshore but mm -hmm. how do we power the the, the systems yeah. then we power the systems through the hydrogen oh. which is green which is mm -hmm. renewable mm -hmm. so that we don't go further to utilize the energy that is going to be produced through oil like for instance use generators and whatever that are, that are also going to now emit yeah. more so we, we focus on utilizing the renewable energy mm. to capitalize on the, the oil and gas industry but at the end of the day it's, a, it's also an economic driver so it, it's something that is mm. going to benefit the country more than mm, the green hydrogen. That's, ah. that, that's, that's, that, that's one other thing that stood out. But also, under the recommendation, the, the, the research also says that, that we really have to work on policy mm. because if we don't have policies in, in, in place mm. that really speak to these industries, then we're going we're gonna to be in the loophole that we, we, we won't have the ownership first of all, second of all, mm. we'll not have control of it because of, of not having policies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we, have poli we need policies that should speak to local content. Mm. We need policies that should speak to the sustainable in terms of how much should be emitted mm. if emission have to happen and how much should, uh, should be controlled, should be captured and all those things. So that policies must be in, in, in place really because that, that area is lacking in terms of both industries there's no policies that speak to both industries at national level i see i see yeah. that's i think that's really a need for policies to be set on that as well yeah. because i think those are like I think the talks around that that we should really own our, our own resources yeah. in Namibia is also like it's also a question that is that comes up a lot as well. Mm -hmm. To another, so you have also like really been recognized in Namibia as one of the best researchers, one of the youngest researchers through the research that you did as well. And so, how do you see the role of research um, in driving sustainable development in Namibia and across Africa as well? And what challenges and opportunities you foresee like in the upcoming years? or in the like in this journey yeah so so one thing about uh sustainable development if we go with even the sdgs mm -hmm. themselves we've come uh, almost eight years now but we've been talking about un sdgs yeah. UN SDGs, but the impact really is is not measurable so that's where research comes in to say are we really doing something because research is simply questions mm. so so with, without questioning what we're doing and wh how we do it, then sustainable development goes will remain decorative uh, principles or something that I can say that mm -hmm. are not re really achievable because there's no action to it that is measurable. So research is just it should be a, a, a more like an entity that mm -hmm. pushes for for measuring what we are doing and how we are doing it. So, so that's that should be the the main ah, role of research to question to say are we doing what and what are we doing and how are we doing it. I see. Uh, also, also, if we if you look at the action that we speak of in terms of action to support these SDGs mm -hmm. so that they achieved, that action when it's backed up with research when there's the research element to it, <laughs> it speaks to what we can avoid and what we cannot uh, mm -hmm. avoid like. What is the, like, this is the road. So the research kind of paves the road and say, before we do that action, this is how it should be done. Then that action should be this. Mm. Yeah, so that, that, that's the main role of okay. research. And, and, and the, the, we, we were just talking about green hydrogen right mm. now. Those are research driven uh, initiatives. Somebody had to do a study and see that there's, there's uh, hyd hydrogen and then there's how we can use hydrogen as a source of energy mm. because 
uh, in the past hydrogen was just a normal molecule that you has just seen and experimented with in the in the laboratories mm. but now it has been identified as one thing that can be used in an in an energy form in, in in agriculture in terms of you utilizing it to 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 make uh, ammonia and all those things mm. so those that those are just some of the case studies that demonstrate that indeed the research can can, can facilitate sustainable development mm. so yeah. Mm, I see, I see. And what are like you being a researcher and in Namibia, so what are some of the challenges that you experience or maybe that researchers do experience within in Namibia and Africa at large, maybe? Yeah, so so research comes at an expense. Mm, mm. A, 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 and just just to develop those tools for data collection, going down to analyzing the mm. data and all those things, especially if it's experimental research. Mm. I, I think uh, there is less investment into research in Namibia, in mm. Africa, in the world in, in, in general. Mm. There is lack of investment and that kind of slows it down. And and, and I, I couldn't be uh, mm. a minus to it, so uh, I also oh, experience it mm. yeah, in terms of when, when it's time to mobilize the resources mm. to put together even like a research project, mm. it's, it's not easy to bring those resources on board yes, or sir. funders or governments mm. even even just the perceptions that are associated with the research are more of it's too expensive mm. so it's it's about the necessity there's a lot of questioning of is it really necessary until that is answered that's when you kind of get the little support that you can get and it comes at uh it comes at its own time so it kind of slows you down also and delays you into publishing mm. or bringing the recommendations forward yeah Ah, so you guys and, and now when you are doing research, especially now in Namibia, do you do research uh, or just like on your own? Do you or do you need an entity to kind of validate your work or to kind of like give you, um, how do you say? Maybe is there like a research board, Namibian research board, or is there like a that really have to validate your work that yes, this research was done by uh, Shipwreck Nyambe and it's this and this. Yeah, so, so normally it's through NCRST, mm -hmm. and NCRST oversees uh, research in Namibia in general. So, but then if you look at it more, it's more on the academic pers perception or academic perspective. Mm -hmm. So they, they regulate that, that kind of re research. In terms of when you do your research on your own, like when I do my research independently, mm. the, the validation sh should come from whoever that is interested in that topic. Mm. So for instance, if I'm doing a, a research to assess maybe uh, Nam youth inclusivity in Namibia, yeah. that means I first have to identify stakeholders that will be like the Minister of Youth. All right. So already like that, the ministry or is creating some sort of uh, yeah affiliation mm. yeah so so you, you first have to affiliate yourself with the stakeholders then you do the data collection or whatever. Mm. but if it's if when it's time to publish then the publisher yeah uh, will of course have to to check to review to say did you follow the ethics when data collection was being done and everything so it, now it becomes the role of the publisher to ensure that there was no harm that mm -hmm. was done to somebody before they publish oh. so the publishing becomes then the the official validation, validation. yeah so oh. it can be through a journal international journal it can be local journals it can be through a university uh but then that that becomes the validation part of it. Okay, I yeah. see, I see. Okay. Because they're not published mm. until they've gone through the work and see that it it has really done. Oh yeah. okay, I see. Mm. And you recently presented also one of your papers at the uh, at the regional is it a regional um university forum. Yeah. So in it was actually on agriculture trade market, on Africa's agricultural trade market. Can you just maybe also elaborate on that as well? Okay, so so that that uh, paper was examining the the effects that the African mm -hmm. continental free trade area framework has had uh, in terms of uh, agriculture yeah like has it been facilitating has it been helping has it been diminishing the market or how so that that's the the, the overall paper mm -hmm. and the fact the key finding was actually that there is a lot of positivity uh, associated with the, the framework uh, though there is also a little bit of negativity so we we'll, uh what 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 really happened is we, i i went in the database of uh world bank for instance mm -hmm. looked into the un uh databases to look at 
what has been really happening in terms of the indexes of trading uh, agricultural products so mm. looked at uh kenya mm. zimbabwe namibia south africa and ghana mm. then we, we we tried to see like these five countries how have they been growing their agriculture because these are some of the countries that are really more into agriculture so like the framework does it really impact them does it allow them to trade more or it's actually diminishing the market mm. so that's that's that was all about that that that, that research uh, okay that's quite interesting and also like okay you you have highlighted the importance of mentorship and networking for the young researchers so how have you, this relationship shaped your career and what advice will you give to other young researchers that are really looking forward to building similar connections as well yeah, first of all, it's, it's very important to, to, mm. to, to have mentors, of course, and I, I, I literate that a lot because especially as young researchers, we, we, we still have a long way to go in terms of we have a lot to learn. Mm. So for us to learn, we need some, someone that is an expert in that area. So for me, I, I have people that have really played a very important role in my, in my research journey. And sometimes it's not really direct mentorship. It's mm -hmm. just you meet at the conference, you shoot your shot, you say, can, can I, I need a mentorship or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the person tells you they're too busy or whatever to, to, to mentor you, mm -hmm. that maybe they, they won't have time to be talking to you or something. Yeah. But that, that five, 10 minutes that you get each time you see them becomes their role in your life and it becomes very mm -hmm. important and, and then the simple advice is like, you, know, I, you, you don't conduct research like this one. You do, you do it this way. You collect data like mm -hmm. this one. You structure it like that one. Or, or maybe they listen to your presentation and that input that they just give to say, ah, your paper is really lacking literature. You should read more. Or, and th those are kind of uh, uh, views that you need from experts and you, you really need those people to be closer to you. So it's professors, it's those doctors. They don't want to be your friend, but you should mm -hmm. make them okay. your, your friends. Ah, and, and, and it's always important to shoot your shoot. Uh, and for young researchers also, what I would advise them is, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to swallow uh, bad comments, mm -hmm. but with the researchers, you, you, you always get bad comments mm -hmm. from publishers, from even, even, even your participants during data collection, mm -hmm. you will get a lot of biasness, you get all those, like for instance, when I was doing the oil and gas, many officials that I tried to, to, to interview, they would turn me down because they would be like, there's a lot of controversy in those ah. issues and all that. So it's not really easy, but yeah, you still have to do it because at the end of the day, we, 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 we really need data. Yeah. And in Namibia, in Africa as a continent, we need data that speaks to our information to our things to our policies to our laws so that we we, we take ownership of our, our own country and our own resources that's very true yeah. okay so you have been honored and recognized especially with the, the with the um okay for example with the namibian sustainable development award and also the run the roof forum uh, young scientist awards as well so how have this recognition really impacted your work and what are your future research and sustainable development goals? Yeah. So, yeah, awards are, are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they give you the recognition and mm -hmm. they, they kind of, uh, you asked about uh, validation. Yeah. And, and, and th th those are some of the things that when you, you, are, you have uh, an award, for instance, it mm -hmm. becomes a reference point. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of validates that what you're doing, it's, it's worth it. It's, it's really speaking to something of element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. And it's 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 that that also that feeling when you are being recognized by your own people. Yeah, and they it's, see it's, the work that you are doing and all that. Mm. And like, do you have any like future research plans or goals or any like upcoming papers or uh, topics that you that you are like going to dive in? Yeah, so uh, currently I'm working on a research project with uh, one organization. Mm. It's on the uh, Namibia's energy systems. Mm. Uh, trying to build a, a, a database for Namibia's energy systems in terms of, of what kind of energy is mm. more used in Namibia, what how how much electrical energy do people consume, and yeah. all those things. Yeah, yeah, and, and that that's one of it. But they, there's still more aspirations of more papers. Mm. Um. Yeah, but uh, 
and, and also trying to i'm trying to also diverse uh diversify my research like to touch it uh not just focus on energy mm. but to also touch uh, on other aspects so that we can just grow our our, our databases okay. in general so we can have we, we need to have data mm. of that speaks to our own if we say green hydrogen uh, what is green hydrogen how is it going to to adapt to be adapted by mm the namibian people so yeah. we need we need to to find out uh how, how are people what are real people's perceptions mm -hmm. on on the the vast policies that are that we have or do we have even those policies in the first place or what should we do to develop those policies so that that's the areas where i have to now really look into look and, uh, yeah. okay that's quite interesting so as a researcher and advocate for innovations as well um, innovation driven solution how do you see the relationship between research innovation and policy development in namibia and what steps can be taken to ensure that research outcomes are effective translated into actionable policies yeah so f first of all we we we, we need to, to, to acknowledge the, the the importance of research as a country mm -hmm. yeah. and, and to put a lot of investment into it because we 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 can't innovate without research so we need to know first so like i mentioned research is knowing is questioning and then getting to know so before we innovate or before we create innovative projects mm -hmm. we first have to understand it and that's, that's where research comes in so that's the alignment between research and innovation so we can't innovate without questioning so we have to question what is it how should it be and then when we get those answers then we, we creatively create something that now it can be implemented into policies that can be implemented into projects mm. or into an initiative depending on what kind of research has been carried out so if it's an examination of um, energy consumption for instance then once we know that this is how much we consume as an ambient nation then we start thinking of how, how other alternative means of how do we then uh, consume electricity in a in a different manner now that that becomes innovation and then whatever that we now discover mm. to to create we, we must also put laws to it that's why policy comes in because if we, if we cannot control it then we cannot own it so we first have to find a way to control it and policy makes us control things it makes us control industries it makes us control the systems and when we are in control of it then we take even ownership so before i start even thinking of owning it mm. can we control it yeah. if we're able to control it then we can we can think of now owning it or claiming to own it to own it yeah. that's quite strong mm. yes yeah, thank you so much, actually, Shepard. And like, okay, uh, before I actually let you go, uh, like, is there anything else that you want to like to add or to touch on uh, that I did not touch on? Is that that I did not touch on that you like want to touch on? Well, I, I think you no. you, 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 you dissected it <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. like, okay, maybe your last words or like maybe okay. Let me ask you the last question. Okay, yeah. well, what do you like? What do you foresee yourself like in the next five years? Well, being the youngest researcher, mm -hmm. you won't be won't be there for, for long <laughs> <laughs> youngsters are coming mm -hmm. and they're coming so so yeah so uh, it's it's more of instead of focusing on the, the uh getting tight with the youngest mm -hmm. the focus is now getting tight at the best mm -hmm. yeah so it's, it's try I'm, I'm really trying to be the best in in the research yes. industry yeah okay and, and to be productive because um uh, the the uh, the issue that I I want to shy away from or that I want people to shy away from is uh, having to be doing research and then you publish then the the papers are remaining the the the, the papers don't even get to the targeted stakeholders mm -hmm. the, it doesn't influence any policy and then like universities uh, have uh, dissections that are like. Like hundreds of them every year, mm. students are, are writing research papers for them to graduate. But then we never see that research anywhere. It just ends in the repositories of the universities, and then um. so someone will be doing a whole uh, research on Namibian education system. Yeah, and then the ministry doesn't even know or get to know about the findings or the recommendation of that research. Mm. So. Yeah, so it's more of getting the research to the industry, mm. getting the data to, to, to reach the industry and the stakeholders and to influence policy as, as much as possible that it can. 
Yeah, and like who do you think is now responsible of making sure that those research papers reach the targeted uh, industries or the targeted um like the targeted stakeholders and all that is it the researcher himself or is it like the the, the publishers and the different um so i i think re uh, the researchers themselves must take accountability and make sure that they they get their work where it's supposed to be so the publishers uh don't really necessarily have to take up that but mm. yes also it's a respons responsibility that uh, can be put on the publishers or the universities for instance mm. they must start they, the universities have research departments so let the, the research department be linking the students to, to the to the industry mm. so that they, they, they start alignment and the papers don't just remain in the libraries yeah, yeah. that's quite true that's quite i know one thing about that but yeah thank you so much for the sure. and i really appreciate it like is, it, like, is there anything that you will love maybe you will want to people to know about you or about maybe or anything that you kind of like want to to kind of like a market or advertise or anything well okay <laughs> <laughs> you know well, if, if, if they you, you need a researcher yeah. I, i'm that researcher <laughs> yeah because i i do consultations so mm, um, i see i see research okay. consultations oh, okay Thank you so much and I uh, wish you all the best and obviously you will, uh, you will soon take up that uh, role of being the best researcher <laughs> sure. in Namibia with the work that you're already doing. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>